How does the Genesis record line up with what we observe on our planet today? Can we find the fingerprints and the artistry of the Creator when we examine the details of creation? Can the truth be found in the words of the very first verse of the Bible? Coming up on today's edition of Origins, Marvels of Our Creator, Part 2. Hello and welcome to Origins. I'm Ray Heipel. It's an honor to be your host today. When we look at the Genesis account in the Bible, nowhere can we find any reference to evolution. Nothing like it is mentioned or even implied by the Word of God. The Bible reveals no natural processes in creation. They were all supernatural. Evolution was not the means or a means by which God created. It was all supernatural and therefore miraculous. In contrast, when we listen to the narrative of our modern culture, most of academia and popular science media, what do we observe? We hear a constant theme of Darwinian evolution, a disdain for God and dismissal of evidence for an intelligent designer. In this age of dogmatic scientific naturalism, what is our secular society deliberately trying to conceal or ignore about our origins? Our theme for today is how science confirms the Genesis account of creation. We'll be featuring some segments from the origin special, The Miracle of Creation. And I'm excited to introduce a friend of origins, Amanda Brocker. Amanda, we don't get to talk to one of our viewers too often. What has the program Origins meant to you over the years? To me, it has just been refreshing to hear this voice of truth that, you know, my spirit isn't grieved when I watch Origins. I, I feel uplifted because it, it just tells me that the Bible is the truth and it shows me these scientists that have studied and they have so much wisdom in these areas. They've dedicated their lives and not all of them when they get into this profession are even believers, but as they're there and they're discovering they find that, wow, this evidence actually lines up with the Bible and what God's Word says. So for me as a, a Bible believer, it gives me peace. On this show, you know, we don't run from the evidence. We don't run from the truth. We go wherever the evidence leads us. And so we try to keep an open mind. We try to be as objective as we can because we know that the Bible's true and we know the proof is all around you. And we know that the, the, the world itself you know, as we called one of our programs, the rocks are going to cry out if we're mm -hmm. silent. And so we like to try to have a voice here. And, and this is something that I'm really glad to be a part of. And I'm really glad you're able to be on this program. You and me both. Well, I have to ask you, so what really um, did God put in your heart that you became the host? I mean, how many hosts has Origins had? Not many. You know, the founder of Cornerstone Television, Russ Bixler, started this program back in 1985, and he was the host for many years. In fact, all the years that I was a camera operator at Cornerstone Television, from the beginning of 1992 to the end of 1996, when I was up in the control room, Russ Bixler was the host. But uh, Dr. Don Chapman became the host a few years after that, and uh, they really took the program uh, from its beginnings, and they really added a lot of really interesting technology like we have here on the set, you know, uh, where we roll in videos, where we send people up to the board, and, and they can do things on the board with a pen that actually writes on the screen electronically, right. and just really some neat, amazing things. But, but what we've never changed is the quality of the guests and the information that we have. We have some of the top scientists in the world in their fields, not just, you know, in, in Christian circles, but in the fields and in the circles of the scientists themselves, some of the best minds in the world. And they believe, they believe this stuff, not because the Bible says so and that's it. They believe it because 
Yes, the Bible says so, but yes, so do the rocks, so do the stars, That's so right. does our DNA mm -hmm. in our body. And so they're, they're following the evidence. And what they're really doing is showing that, that all truth really is God's truth. And so at this point, what I want to do is, is stop and we're going to take a look at the opening of, of a special that we have called The Miracle of Creation. Watch this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is our starting place. And it is the Word of God in which God speaks. The Holy Bible is the history book of the universe. The Bible is not theory. The Bible is fact. The Miracle of Creation was a series of supernatural, inexplicable miracles. Biomedical Genetics Geology Computational Physics Microbiology Cosmology Paleontology Bible Genetics and Intelligent Design. The Miracle of Creation. You know, Amanda, one of the things that we do on Origins is we have these scientists come in and they study the natural. They can't study the supernatural, the miracle. But what their science shows them is that there has to be more mm -hmm. than the natural. There has to be the miracle of creation. And so I'm really excited about this special that we have mm -hmm. because miracle is real and we can see that it must be the case. There must be a being who is supernatural. There must be a God, a God who does miracles. What does that say to you as a believer and, and as somebody who really does want to understand the truth around you? I know that... It the reality is in our world that we all have a choice, Ray, to either believe God's word for what it says or to believe man's reasonings. And I choose to put my hope and my trust on God's word, knowing that he's not a man that he could lie. You know, when we rely on man's reasonings, we could be believing a fable because man can lie, but God cannot. And I believe that God's word is the inspired word of God that comes from him. And it's his message really of love to us. He wants us to have understanding so that we can fulfill ultimately the call of God on each of our lives. Amanda, that is so true. And now watch this next segment from our special, The Miracle of Creation. My name is Danny Faulkner. I'm the astronomer at Answers in Genesis. I'm also a distinguished professor emeritus at the University of South Carolina, Lancaster. I left one really great job for another really great job. I taught astronomy and physics at the university. In the physics class, I didn't talk about origins much because physics is a very clean science. But when you teach astronomy, that's a little different. I would say that uh, any, any student that came out of the second semester of my class believing the Big Bang hadn't been paying attention, I think. And I would also have opportunities from time to time to share some ideas of why I think the, the universe and the Earth is, is quite young. Uh, you know, as a scientist, I look out in the world and I see order. I see uh, physics going on. I see a consistent pattern. But that's not all I see. I also see the wonder and the beauty of the world around me and the, the, the heavenly realm is just, just packed full of these things. And I'm thinking, well, only an artist can do this. I've always had access to really nice telescopes and uh, I love sharing the, the wonder and beauty of astronomy. I can point things out, the constellations and stars to people, but it's really great to get that uh, telescope out and show people things. Uh, we can look at the moon, we can look at the sun with safe filters, don't try this at home folks. And then we can look at the uh, planets uh, in star clusters and galaxies. But you know, the, probably the favorite is Saturn. I first saw it almost a half century ago. I was just into high school 
and I never get tired of looking at it. I tell people I've probably seen Saturn 10,000 times and every time it's just as wonderful as the first time. I think we have a delightful universe, lots of mysteries out there, lots of surprises, and it just speaks of the creativity we have in our, in our Lord. You look up and, and you see the photos, you see things for your own eyes. How can you see those things and not realize that there is a creator? To me, it's like a billboard, a big billboard advertising, you know, I am here. There has to be a creator God, and, and there are many people who try to explain away by saying, well, it was a big bang that caused the universe to happen. The Big Bang model is the ultimate evolutionary theory. It's an idea of how the universe came to be suddenly 13, uh, they think now 13.8 billion years ago, out of absolutely nothing. There is no creator, there is no God. But uh, it wrapped them inside of that as a physics. Where did the physics come from? Where did the design and order come from? We live in a very ordered universe. Where did that order come from? Uh, many uh, cosmologists and physicists are just surprised. There's all this order there, but why is there order? Well, because there is a giver of order. Without that, the universe would be chaos, I believe, because the New Testament tells us he sustains the, the, uh, the order of creation moment by moment. Without that sustaining, I think this world would would cease to exist. And that sustaining that we see, we, we, can, we describe it mathematically, we call it physics. You can show all the evidence in the world you want to them that evolution is problematic, it has troubles, and creation is better to understand. But they're going to resist that because of the implications, the philosophical and theological implications of that. So I say many times it's not a head problem, it is a heart problem. You know, life is one of those things that's it's really mysterious in many respects, and it doesn't seem to come from anything but other living things. So where did the first living things come from? Well, if you were committed to naturalism and, and uh, uh, the materialism that only the material, physical, natural world exists, then you're going to have to make up an, ex an explanation for that existence of life. And so you, your naturalistic origin is going to be that life somehow arose in primordial soup at volcanic vents, many different places that it could have happened, supposedly. And no matter how convoluted that theory is, no matter how improbable it is, it must have happened because that's the only possibility that you will allow in your worldview. You've, remember, you've excluded the supernatural, but if something has a supernatural explanation, you have no hope of ever reaching the correct answer to your, to your, que your question because you've excluded it from the very beginning. A truly open-minded scientist should be open to the possibility of the supernatural but when it all is said and done, many of them will walk away because they don't want to believe in their hearts. Our creator is an artist, and only a creator much, much bigger than this huge universe we have it could be responsible for all of this. I find it remarkable that people can see this wonder, beauty, the pattern, the immensity of the universe, and come away thinking there is no God. To me, that is irrational. It is I who made the earth and created mankind on it. My own hand stretched out the heavens. I marshaled their starry hosts. Amanda, one of the things I love about Origins is the variety of guests that we have. You know, we have experts in, in their fields of all the different kinds of science, and, and Dr. Faulkner is a great example of that. You know, we've in the past talked about the microscopic and how the smaller you go, the more it points to God. Well, with Dr. Faulkner, we're looking at the gigantic, the enormous, right. you know, the, the unfathomable size of the universe. And the bigger we go, scientifically, the more it points to the need as he said, for a supernatural being. If the natural, if what we see in nature says there must be a supernatural being, then we're actually being unscientific, unreasonable right. to not go where the evidence leads. I love what Dr. Faulkner said that creation is God's billboard. Like when we look up, like we should see him, his divine design. 
and it's just so amazing. I love that scripture from Isaiah that that ended with, I just, I have to read it again, Isaiah 45, 12. I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, stretched out the heavens and all their hosts I have commanded. Like, this is the Lord's word. Like, we are building our foundation here at Origins and our desire is that you would build your foundation on God's word because it is a solid foundation. If God says that he created, then he created. You know, so oftentimes we get accused of, of brainwashing or of just, you know, telling the kids what the Bible says and ignoring the science. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's the secularists, it's the atheists, it's the evolutionists who do that. They won't allow us a place at the table. We won't, we won't even mention God. We, we won't even mention the Bible. We'll just show that the evidence, what it says, is that the natural can't explain it, that it shows that there must be intelligence as we saw in the video, there must be order. We see the order, we wouldn't be able to understand things. And so what our school does is it looks at the theory of evolution. We teach the kids what the theory of evolution says, but we show them where it's wrong. We show them how the evidence does not back up this theory. So is there a theory out there that says everything came from this tiny little, you know, amoeba that crawled out of the primordial soup after the world made itself 15 billion years ago? Sure, there's a theory that says that. Does the actual evidence that we see back that up? No, actually the evidence says that could not possibly be true. This is the importance of why Origins program is relevant in this day and hour. And I am grateful, you know, that you guys have taken this on to help enlighten our understanding that we can know God's word is truth. Well, it's our pleasure and privilege to be able to do so. And we thank you so much. And for so many out there like you who are watching the show and who are taking it and, and leading other people to watch and to learn that what the Bible says really is true and you can see that in the proof that's all around you. Well, Amanda, we have to stop right now and take a break. Please don't miss our video segment revealing what scientists have found in dinosaur bones confounding evolutionists when we come back. Scientific materialism. The belief that life is nothing more than the product of blind, undirected processes. Why has our world chosen to push a pseudoscience that is neither fact-based nor provable, but instead is a narrative simply designed to push their own agenda? It is time to embark on an amazing journey as we delve into several facets of science. Paleontology, geology, astronomy, microbiology, genomics, and more each one of these areas confirming the work of our Creator. We're inviting you to come along with us in this unique presentation, The Miracle of Creation, for your gift of only $20. From Dr. Danny Faulkner and the wonders of our universe, to Dr. Marcus Ross and the discovery of soft tissue inside dinosaur bones, you will be captivated, entertained, and astounded as the true facts of science ring out, pointing to its author as the creator of all. To get your copy, write to Origins, Cornerstone Network, 1 Signal Hill Drive, Wall, PA, 15148, or call 412-824-3930. Get your DVD today for only $20 and find out how God has made himself known for all who are willing to see. going to go to a video now with Dr. Marcus Ross. Check this out. My name is Dr. Marcus Ross. I'm a professor of geology and the director of the Center for Creation Studies at Liberty University. Uh, my background is in paleontology. I'm a fossils and rocks guy. Uh, I did my PhD in paleontology at the University of Rhode Island where I worked on a group of animals called mosasaurs. Those are the big swimming marine reptiles uh, that are in the oceans. And uh, some of them got to be enormous and huge and bigger than Tyrannosaurus rex even. And from a young age, I also had a great passion for learning about dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. And when I was seven years old, I discovered that there was such a person 
as a paleontologist. And so from that point on, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I had a word and a name for a person who studied dinosaurs. And so from that very early age, I started realizing that there were a lot of questions that needed to be addressed about creation, about evolution, about the record of the rocks and Noah's flood and how creation unfolded and looking at the evidence that God has left us in the world around us and comparing that with the record of revelation that he provided us in the Bible. It's a real privilege to teach at Liberty University. Many of the students come from evangelical homes and backgrounds and are Christians and the science students uh, who make up a large a number of my students in our creation course have a lot of questions about how do we look at the world around us from a distinctly creation perspective and it's a wonderful opportunity to start to walk through some of those issues in biology, geology, astronomy, and, and biblical theology with them. I studied paleontology uh, for many years in college and dinosaurs were a, a big component of that. Dinosaurs are spectacular organisms. They are the dragons that were real. You know, it's, it's one thing to read the Lord of the Rings and to read The Hobbit and hear of Smaug. That's great and we all wish and place ourselves within a world in which there's dragons. But with dinosaurs, we've got those real animals. They're in the past, we don't have them with us today, but we can go to a museum and we can see the bones and the skeletons of these enormous creatures that humble us, that dwarf us, that terrify us, uh, that fascinate us. I was trained throughout my undergraduate and graduate career in paleontology and one of the things that we were taught was uh, how fossilization happens. And, and we know that uh, in order to have a fossil you have to bury something generally pretty quickly. Uh, otherwise the fossil is, is torn apart by wave action or by erosion. Uh, it's broken down by the sun and so you've got to bury them quickly to get them at all. But the other thing that I was then learned is that fossilization happens at a fairly slow rate because it takes time for minerals to replace the biological minerals of the shell and the tooth of the bone and that this process is more or less complete that you start off with something that's wholly organic and over time by the time you get it as a fossil it's pretty much all rock mineral it's been all replaced in 2005 when dr mary schweitzer and colleagues published a paper in the journal science giving us a glimpse into something none of us ever expected to see in a fossil and that was in a Tyrannosaurus leg bone that there were intact blood vessels that there were probably blood cells red blood cells that were inside this that there were uh, bits and pieces of the animal that had never been fossilized at all that there was original soft tissue and so for me even as a creationist I wasn't expecting to find original soft tissue because I was trained to think that fossilization is a complete process. It's not. This is revolutionizing the way that paleontologists are looking at the process of fossilization and it's more consistent with what a young age creation or a young earth creation is going to look like because the time at which this fossil was originally a bone to now is actually not that long. The time in which these mineralogical replacement processes have been going on is not that long. And so while there are several devices and explanations that are being proposed for how soft tissue might be possible in a multi-million, multi-billion year world, none of them are at this point very convincing. But from a young earth perspective, it's easier to understand how soft tissue could survive for a few thousand years than it is to explain from an old earth perspective that these tissues re remain and remain intact for tens of millions of years. We know from biological experiments that they degrade much faster and can't survive that long. The discovery of still original soft tissues within dinosaur bones and a variety of other species that have been uh, discovered over, over the past decade is providing powerful evidence that the earth is young. I love dinosaurs, my kids love dinosaurs, I'm sure you grew up loving dinosaurs, and yet for years, these magnificent creatures that God made have been used to tell us that there is no God, that we all evolved, that they're at least 60 million years old, these fossils, and yet now, again, the more we learn, the more we know, 
the more we see that the Bible is true. You know, Ray, I can remember as a child going to Carnegie Science Museum and I loved looking at those fossils and hearing this teaching, you know, which we have available through Origins, it excited me at the thought that there was probably soft tissue on the inside of what I was looking at and the reality of, you know, the flood, it was a real event and it was a global event and the only way that billions of these dinosaurs and other creatures, you know, were buried quickly, they had to have been buried quickly, is through that flood. It all points to Noah and that, that ark that he built and that that was a true event. There's a spiritual, a spiritual darkness that we're fighting here, Amanda. It's not just about, hey, this is what the science says, so now everybody's gonna agree. It's really a heart problem. And that's something that I know is on your heart. Well, Ray, I would love to have the opportunity to even pray for our viewing audience. And I know my own family, we all are, you know, we're combating what the world is saying compared to what God's word is saying. But I would like to just pray for our hearts. That would, would be that wonderful. Be okay? Thank you, Heavenly Father, right now for the work of the Holy Spirit, God, that you sent to be here among us to help us understand, Lord. And I thank you that those who have tuned into this program, those who are searching and wanting to know the truth, Holy Spirit, reveal it to them. God, reveal it to my own family, God, that each one will believe that your word is the truth. Father, take off any spiritual blinders that we have. God, remove any plugs from our ears that we won't even hear of it. Lord, I thank you right now, even for divine appointments, for you drawing even people to watch this program that they would know and have that just reality that I'm watching this because God wanted me to know the truth. Lord, give us those opportunities and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Amanda, for being part of, part of the program and we hope you continue to watch Origins. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us. As we always say when we close this program, we know what the Bible says is true and the proof, it's all around you. If you enjoy the program Origins, we could sure use your help to keep this Creation TV program on the air. Your support both prayerfully and financially make a big impact. So let's work together and reveal how awesome our Creator truly is. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this edition of Origins. For a DVD of this program, you can order online or send a $12 donation to cover shipping and handling and write to Origins, program number 2104, Cornerstone Network, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148. This presentation was made possible by the faithful prayers and financial support of you, our Cornerstone family.